Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello, and welcome to Pop Turnative. This is the talk show and podcast where we have digital discussions, worlds of TV, film, news, pop culture, everything really. Depending on the guests, we talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Bruno Miotis. On social media, you know me as PD Beats. My guest and actor, you're of course going to recognize him from a lot of really cool TV shows like Van Helsing, Snowpiercer. We're talking also about his film, Chained. We're talking about that with Alex Ponovic. Alex, welcome to Popternative. Thanks for having me, brother. Thanks for having me. We were talking before. I mean, this interview is like, feels like a couple long, years in the making. Long overdue, man. <laughs> long overdue. It's always exciting. You always seem to have a lot of amazing projects um, on the go. Um, but this movie, Chained, is something, man. It's a really, really cool film. Talk a little bit about that and uh, what, what we could expect from this film, Alex. Well, it's the, it's a psychological thriller. And the idea of, um, you know, it really kind of deals with that toxic masculinity. And, yeah. and you know, even, even, you know, the idea of, you know, for the Adrian Holmes, who plays the father, you know, what he goes through of just trying to be a dad and how frustrating that is. He thinks he's doing the right things, but the, the, the masculinity and really kind of uh, puts a, puts a damper on the relationship. And, and, and then it goes into how Marlon, the, 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 the young man playing the actor um, that I deal with and how he finds this, this guy chained up and how he wants to take care of him. And, and I love, I love the, when I read the script, there were so many little, cracks in it of telling stories that are subversive it makes the audience think it it gives the it, it doesn't it doesn't let the audience off the hook and it gives it the tribute of knowing that your audience is intelligent it just it doesn't need to be fed crap it it can it can the audience can figure this out so let's give them something to figure out and work at it and i love that apart with the script and and the dichotomy of and the juxtaposition of of the size of me and the size of the boy and, and how he has the control over me and the psychological aspect of, of the, the show that, and how can he get, get out of the chains? And uh, so that, that's just, I think a, a great way to go through the story and see how it unfolds. Absolutely. And you know, it's interesting you say that about the script because that was my next question. I mean, this film is packed. Like, there's a lot happening in this film. Mm -hmm. And I find now these days, Alex, a lot of, and I think this is a credit to the writers and the directors. I mean, movies are, are like, and it's not obvious, but they're throwing a lot of stuff in movies these days, like to kind of make the audience think and everything. And this is a movie that does that as well. Yeah. And I, and I love that, uh, that Titus Heckle who wrote it and directed it, um, um, had so much faith in the audience of that they would they would figure we don't have to spell it out for them, um, and that's what I really loved about the script and and how we ended up executing it, it and the look of the the shots and the the composition and the colors of it and um, and just the real rawness of 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 the piece that makes people think about you know their own lives. Absolutely. So it's it's funny too because in the intro I also I mean I feel like. The, Interview the like, guests like yourself are kind of hard for like the hosts because there's so much stuff to talk about. Like you've worked on so many things. I'm sure you've heard that a lot. <laughs> we, yeah. we gotta try to like cram it all in there. It feels like <laughs> right, right. Which I, which is great because we get to figure it out. We get we're like rolling dice. Let's figure out just what we can talk about. Well, pretty. It's it's. I mean, I I mentioned on the top. I mean, you there's a lot of things you're working on, <laughs> but like. You know, Van Helsing and Snowpiercer. Van Helsing, first of all, is just a beast of a show, a beast of a fan base on sci-fi. I mean, you know, you played Julius on that. I mean, what's what like what's what's that experience like in terms of making Van Helsing, Alex? Oh man, it like it was five years. We did we've done five years. We're wrapping up this year. And again, it's a testament to to sci-fi and Netflix and the producers that allowed us to have one more year to wrap up the storyline so anybody that wants to see the show that it's not just going to be abruptly cut off and I, I love that they allowed us that and allowed the fans that um and to work on a show like this and and see the creativity and the fun like we get a lot of fun we we, we work with a lot of great people and i think that's why the show it, it just shows in our work even though it's a it's a dark show and uh it's a dark telling of the Van Helsing, uh, Van Helsing idea. 
Um, we had some amazing people a part of the show, and it was just so, so such an honor to be a part of. Yeah, and I spoke to he- uh, Heather Dirksen about this too. I mean, you like Slovakia, like it was like yeah, and <laughs> crazy. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get the privilege to go, but like some por- portions of it, like the castles was that was like Slovakia. Oh my God. I know. <laughs> All the uh, they kept on telling. I remember when we were told it's like, so we're going to shoot the first three episodes in Slovakia. And I was like, yes, let's go. Uh, n- not you, Alex. I'm like, oh. Uh, but th- just hearing the stories of how epic it was to be there and, and shoot. And yeah, like all I the think, castles and everything. Like yeah, that, that, I think, they, is just the coolest thing. They they actually shot in Bram Stoker's castle. Yeah. Like the actual, that's mind boggling. I feel and like what, you're upset at me because you didn't get the chance to go. And I'm, I'm so <laughs> mad at you right now, man. <laughs> Just have to rub it in, don't you? <laughs> but isn't the, the fan base for it? Because, like, you know, part of my job too is, you know, I do these interviews, you know, but I'm also kind of keeping an eye on certain things and shows and traction and like the fan housing fans, man, it's something. It really is it's, something. It's next level, man. Yeah. Like we, would, we wouldn't have been able to do five years if it wasn't for the fans. And, yep. and I love talking on social media to the fans and connecting with the fans um they literally made us where we are and it's basically given me a career and i'm so indebted to the to the fan base so indebted absolutely you also worked on a show you know teen that was on tnt and netflix at one point snowpiercer and the thing about that show alex is you know it's interesting because it is I guess it's hard to say, I don't know, like loosely based. I mean, you know, there was a film, there's a Snowpiercer film with Chris Evans, right? Everyone loved it and everything. And it's one of my favorite films. And, you know, then this show comes and it it's like based on it, but it's this whole different thing. Um, totally. But it's such a fun show. What's it like working on that show? Well, see, that's the thing. It's like with Van Helsing, we were all over the place. Like yep. you said, Slovakia, we were, we were always on location um, it was rare where we were in the studio for more than uh, one or two episodes, but this film is done or this TV show is done all in the studio. We're yeah. basically on the train and the train, there's so many different compartments and different of the st- different parts of the stages, uh, but they're actual train cars. And it, it's just so wonderful to be a part of that, that tangible thing. You know what I mean? And yeah. um, being a part of that and telling that story with such a huge ensemble and everyone's kind of got their own journey within this kind of Noah's Ark vision. And, and, and you know, the, the ideas have taken from the original film mm-hmm. um, and just kind of, um, you know, I, I love some of the tip of the hats that we have in the show to the original one. But also it's, you know, it's literally the ensemble. It's mm-hmm. all about the ensemble and telling this, this um, you know, po- post-apocalyptic story. Uh, and, and it's just, it's just great because, I mean, the caliber of actors on this show is just ridiculous. Absolutely. Now there is another project I wanted to talk to you about because it brings up two things that I want to kind of ask you and talk to you about. It brings up the genre of horror and it also brings up Canadian content and Canadian films, right? You did have a horror movie called the sinners, which is like, Alex, I have to say like I love that film. Like that film That's great. is so good. And that's so great. The horror movie genre is just exploding and amazing. And I'm telling you, the mm-hmm. fact that one, I mean, this film had from top to bottom just an insane cast. So good. It's a Canadian movie. Like this is a Canadian yeah. horror movie. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. And Courtney Page directed it. And, yep. and Aaron was part of the writing team. It was, it was a, it was a, Alan was a part of it. Uh, there was a, a great group of people that took this film the script with very little money mm-hmm. and shot it shot it in a place called Kelowna which is just outside of BC yep. or outside of Vancouver and um and we we made it happen through you know digging through the dirt and just kind of finding the shots and stealing locations and stealing drone shots and just just to make this thing happen and it's a testament to Courtney Page's drive and and her wanting to be a director and and her vision of of this story so it, yeah, I mean, it wasn't an easy film to make at all, and I think that's what makes it compelling. Is everyone worked so hard to to have this film completed, and again, Courtney Page is just you know phenomenal. Now, I just want to double check you. I, I you like you you live you work a lot and live in Vancouver, correct? Yeah. So I, are I, you? I, can, I but you're Canadian. Are you from Vancouver? 
I'm originally from a place in Canada called Winnipeg. Oh, you're from Winnipeg. So, you're from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Yeah. yeah, I'm. I'm in. I'm. Ca- I'm Canadian. I'm in Ottawa. Oh yeah, there you go. Okay. Absolutely. No. Okay. So, Ottawa so, kid. so you're a Canadian. Well, I'm originally a Montreal kid, but I've been here for uh, about eleven years. So, got it. Yeah. Yeah. But, I'm a prairie kid. I've been. In, I've been out in the, in the West Coast, LA, and Vancouver for. But, but, but my years. point. You were Canadian. You were a Canadian storyteller. Okay. So. Yeah. I'm just curious, you know, um, we'll get back to the chain, but I just find it interesting talking to a lot of amazing, like it's like we, there's a lot of amazing actors and storytellers from Canada and there are some productions that are Canadian, but I still think there is some room for, uh, for improvement in terms of like Canadian productions and, and creating Canadian things. There's a lot of Canadians that work on American shows, you know what I mean? And everything. Do you agree with me that there is like, a lot of room for improvement with like more stuff being made like by Canadians rather than Canadians going and kind of working on Netflix shows or like things on sci-fi. Like, do you understand what I talked about there? Yeah. I, and, and I think they're here. It's, it's just, it's, yeah. it's a lot tougher to make those films and yeah. it's a lot tougher without, you know, American money or the money to have it. But, but when you get films like sinners and, and chained of, of Canadian productions that mm-hmm. want to tell those stories, and it's a lot harder to tell those stories because of the financing. Yep. So the talents here, and it, it's, a, it's a, you know, you just look all over the world, you know, with Ryan Reynolds, Jim Carrey, like there's talent in Canada and it's just getting the teams together to, to really build it. And, um, you know, Van Helsing is, is basically a Canadian production. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. There is definitely room and there should be more room for these stories to be told for sure. And, um, I, I think it's here. I think it's just going to take like a little bit more time. Because they're shooting a lot of stuff here. I mean, Toronto is a location for some of the biggest shows on the planet right now, right? right. From Netflix right. and Amazon right. and Vancouver, it's always been there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, for a big uh, shooting place. But, you know, it's interesting because I just spoke to a Toronto director, Mark Rosso, who directed Awake on Netflix with Gina Rodriguez. And he was just saying like it was tough. It, it he ironically felt like it was tougher to break like the Canadian film scene <laughs> versus the American film scene. <laughs> it's tr- it's true. It's very true that you know the 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 scene here is pretty um it's pretty compact. So that to to be able to get the funds for a film that yeah. man I, I hate to say it but he's right. Two things specifically. What's your favorite thing about being a storyteller? Is there something that kind of stands out in terms of, because you've worked on so many amazing projects, amazing people, different kind of areas around the world. Like, what do you love the most about it? Relationships. Yeah. Building friendships and relationships. That is the most. Telling a story that somebody connects to, and then we all go, okay, let's tell this story together. Or fans that really enjoy the storytelling, then I get to connect with them. It's relationships and connecting with people that that is above and beyond for me I, and, and affecting, you know, if I can tell a story like I did a film called numb years ago mm-hmm. and and and, you know, some of the some of the stuff in there really, really affected people out of the theater. And I remember I went to a couple couple screenings just on the sidelines and didn't want anybody to know that I was there. So and then after the film, I was in the hallway and people were emotionally, you know, taken by the film. And those are the moments that I love that people connect emotionally to the work that I do. And then you just build relationships from there. Absolutely. And then now before we wrap up chained, you know, people are going to be able to see chained Um, the obvious answer is questions. You hope that, you know, they get a lot out of it. June 15th, June 15th, pretty tomorrow. There it is. (laughs) What are you hoping they get out of this film when they watch it, Alex? reflect just just to reflect on you know you know what 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 are the the um not so generous traits that you have that you can work on and not pass down to either a friendship or if you're in a mentor position or 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 even a father son father daughter thing and and just just the slightest bit of just "Mm, i can do better i can do better and i think that's the biggest part of this is that we 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 can all do better and how to handle things and, and it's life and and it and it's okay to be vulnerable and talk about these things. Absolutely. Well, Alex, I think this interview was like three, four years in the making, possibly. Yeah. And I think it was well worth the wait, man. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Are, are you are you ending it now because of dog groomers? No, that no, that's it? usually You're, what <laughs> we got we gotta get the dog, man. No, the dog's no, looking pretty. Absolutely not. Dog's <laughs> looking pretty. 
I, I, I'm really, seriously, man, like, you are really an inspiration. You do some really, really good work, dude. Like, honestly, it's, it's amazing. And thank you so much for coming on my show. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, brother. And can you quickly plug away where people could follow you on social media? You're pretty active on there. Where could they follow you? Yeah, uh, you can follow me on Instagram, uh, which is Alex Pon, A L E K S P A U N, and Twitter, same name, and Alex Ponovic uh, fan page on uh, Facebook. And I usually try to check mostly. Mostly, it's Instagram stuff, but um, that's where you can get a hold of me. Absolutely. Well, this has been Pop Turn of Look Out for Chain, starring Alex Ponovic and Adrian Holmes, June fifteenth. YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Alex Ponovic and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.